Hey, I'm Cheryl and I am a Utah girl and I've been a teacher for 24 years and today I thought I would give you a little Zion 101 for beginners. I like to travel to new places but a lot of times I know nothing about them so I'm hoping this video would be helpful to someone who's never been to Zion and I'm hoping my experiences could be helpful to somebody else. I'm going to try to cover 10 things in 10 minutes so hang in there with me. Okay, the first thing is what exactly is Zion? So Zion is a really really cool canyon but there's actually divided into four sections so the main part that people think about is the Zion Canyon and it's eight miles and there's a, the beautiful Virgin River running through it and these towering canyon walls up on the side and that's a part you usually hear about but there's also another portion of Zion Canyon that heads out to the east entrance and that's a road you can drive on it's the Mount Carmel Road and you actually get to go through a really cool tunnel on there and there's some really cool rock formations along that road now the other two lesser known parts are the Kolob Canyons. There's Kolob Canyon, which is about a mile away from the Zion Canyon, and it's a wilderness area that is, you know, the trails aren't packed, there are a lot of sand, they're not really well marked, but a super cool place to go. And then the last one is the Kolob Terrace Road, which is a drive also a mile away from the main canyon. And so when you visit Zion, there are those four sections of the park to visit, but the most popular one is Zion's Canyon. That's where there's the Angels Landing and the Narrows. Next question, what is there to do in Zion? Well, of course, there are the very famous adventure hikes. What I love the most about Zion is that you can go on some legit adventures without backpacking 15 miles in. The very famous Angels Landing with the cool chain section, it's only a five mile hike. It's rigorous, but it's only five miles or the Narrows, I think when I was younger and didn't know much about it, I thought that this was like a day long trip, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's only that way if you start from the top and go down to the bottom. But most of us locals and visitors, we start at the bottom, we go on the cool riverside walk, and then we get our gears like our water boots and our neoprene socks and our hiking sticks, and then we just walk up the river until we wanna turn around. A lot of people will go about three miles and then turn around, but it's really up to you and we've seen all ages of people hiking the narrows and the angels landing the narrows super cool amazing hikes but you don't have to be doing those rigorous hikes to enjoy zion there's also some very nice walks um, a couple of our favorites are the riverside walk which is at the end of the canyon and that is just an asphalt trail i wouldn't try pushing a wheelchair up it but a stroller yeah i would do that and it's just a mile each way and you get like a little taste of the narrows without actually getting in the river and then there's also the Weeping Rock, which is only like 0.4 miles round trip and beautiful. So some great trails right there. And then I'm gonna tell you one of my little personal favorites that not many people go on, but it's just the Grotto Trail. It's just between, if I'm on the Grotto, the Zion Visitor Center stop, it's just right along the road. But I mean, the thing that's amazing about Zion is you can see the canyon no matter where you're at. And so even if you're along the road, it's amazing. Next is to just go for a drive or a ride. Riding the Zion shuttle is fun. And the bus drivers do a great job narrating the canyon and it's, you know, it'll take you about an hour to do the whole loop if you don't get off the shuttle, but most people do and they get off and kind of check out what there is at the stops. But riding on the shuttle is fun. And then if you don't want to ride the shuttle or if you want to in addition, you can go up the Zion Mount Carmel Road and so scenic getting to go through that tunnel and really cool rock formation. So a totally different experience than going up Zion Canyon. Now, if you really want to get adventurous, you can go into the Kolob areas. The Kolob Terrace Road is super cool. You actually get to see some water there. Water is kind of scarce in Zion, but you get to see water there. And it's higher elevation, so you're getting away from that hot, hot heat if you're here in the summer. Oi, hot. And, <laughs> and then lastly, there's Kolob, just the Kolob area of the park, which is a fun place to do some adventure hiking and some great hikes where there's just this, you're right in the middle of some slot canyons. So there you go, nutshell of what there is to do in Zion. Next up are the shuttles. Ooh, shuttles in one minute, I can totally do this. Okay, there's two shuttles you can take. There's one in the town of Springdale, which is right outside of Zion. And that's just to get visitors from the city to the other stop where you can catch a shuttle into the canyon. Um, Zion is so popular now that there's not enough parking at the visitor center for all the visitors. So there's lots of paid parking along the street in Springdale and you can just catch the free shuttle and head on into the park. The second shuttle is right from the visitor center and it will take you up Zion Canyon. There's nine stops and it runs pretty much the entire year, but it's, it's mandatory March through 
November. Now every year it does kind of change depending on visitation, but that's a ballpark. You can check the website, but Zion Canyon is only accessible via shuttle for those months of the year. And guests that stay at the lodge, they can drive up to the lodge, but they can't go past the lodge. So even if you are staying in the park, you can only go so far. Oh, and you don't need a reservation to ride the shuttle at this time. <laughs> Next up, do you need reservations to visit Zion? No, thank goodness you don't. Zion has been going through some major growing pains the last few years. Holy smokes, it's gone up a lot, but it's because Zion is amazing and that's why so many people are coming. But at this time, you don't need a reservation for anything in the park except to do part of Angel's Landing. You can still do a good portion of the Angel's Landing Trail without a reservation. In fact, you can do the first two miles of it. It's just the last half mile, it's called the Hogs Back, and that's where you're holding onto those chains. That's where you need a permit to do that. And I'm not even gonna tell you when the reservation window opens because it changes every year, and I don't wanna give you wrong information. So my only advice there is to just check the National Parks website a few months before your trip so you kind of know what reservations you need to get and the conditions. Now, if you're thinking about planning a trip to Zion, I, like I said, I am going through this at lightning speed, but we have a whole playlist of things about Zion. So if you want more in depth on anything, we have a whole trip planner video that's about an hour long that will walk you through all the details. So check that out if you're interested. Next, do you have to be a hiker to enjoy Zion? I would say no. I think Zion is better if you can go do Angel's Landing in the Narrows for sure, but just even as you drive through the town of Springdale, you will be able to tell that this is a special place. I can't believe that as many times as I've been to this park, I mean, I, I've been going here since I was a kid. I live four hours away from here, so this is like a yearly thing. It's just majestic to me, the, the sandstone, the sunlight hitting the sandstone, hearing the Virgin River, everything about Zion is just incredible. And getting to see it from the shuttle is cool and getting to see it from the road is cool. And even if you only make it to a couple overlooks, that's okay too. My parents are retired and they're still in really good shape, but one of their favorite things to do is just to go along that Zion River walk. And so I would say absolutely, you can enjoy Zion without being a major hiker. Next is how long should your trip be to Zion? I really think that depends on what you like to do. If you're a hiker, you could easily spend three or four days in this park going on all the hikes. If you're not a hiker, I would say you could comfortably do this park in a day or a day and a half if you're just doing drives and overlooks. So it really depends on what you like to do. And one other thing to know about Zion is, unlike a lot of other national parks that have some touristy things outside of it to do, Zion really doesn't have that. So it's not like there's plays and obstacle courses and gun ranges. Like there aren't things like that surrounding Zion. And so Zion's kind of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just an important thing to know is like you come to Zion and you do the park but there's not a whole lot of outside like adventures besides there are some really cool other hiking overlook experiences surrounding the park at some of Utah State Parks. Let's talk weather in Zion. Caliente. It is so hot at Zion in the summer. In fact I avoid coming to Zion in the summer at all costs. <laughs> it is so hot. So I mean something that, you can look online and see what the temperature is here and that will kind of give you an idea but not completely because if you're out in the sun these red rocks they hold the heat and it radiates off and so even 70 degrees can feel quite hot today it's in the 60s and it's amazing it's a beautiful day to be out here and most of the day i haven't even wearing my jacket but i'm in the shade right now which is another point is that it might say it's 80 degrees outside if you get in one of those slot canyons where there's no sun it can be cold the other thing to know is that the water in Zion is super cold. Um, the Virgin River that people hike in to go do the Narrows is, is chilly and cold. And the other thing to know about Zion is that it actually does get snow. When we visited here in December, November, you'll see snow and ice along the canyon walls and it's really quite beautiful. So just things to be aware. And I would say like the best time of year to come here if you want good weather, I would think maybe October and even like later April. One other thing to know about if you're trying to pick a time to go, let me just tell you a couple of benefits with certain times of the year. We're here over spring break, the first week of April. It's beautiful. A couple of the downsides is that the trees don't have any green on them and the red rock with the green leaves is one of our favorite things about the park. Something good about being here right now is that there's waterfalls everywhere and red rocks and waterfalls are, they're kind of rare and fun to see. And the other little caution about coming in the spring is that the Virgin River is quite fast and sometimes it's so fast that 
they close the narrows down because if the water's going too fast, it's dangerous and there is a risk for flash floods. So yeah, I think maybe the sweet spot would be October here in Zion <laughs> for the time to go. Now, the last question that might be on everyone's mind is, is Zion a safe park to go to? I think Zion has gotten some bad publicity over the last couple of years because of falls, particularly at Angel's Landing. But in my personal opinion, I think Zion is a safe park to visit. And let me tell you why. The Rangers do a really good job about letting people be aware of the risks. There's flash flood warnings, listed places. They talk about the dangers of climbing Angel's Landing and things like that. Um, I think personally for our family on this trip, I have, I have four children and I chose not to take them on Angel's Landing. I don't think they're ready to go on that. They're not going to tell me I can't, there's an age limit on Angel's Landing, but I'm choosing because I know my kids and I know their ages. I think this will be better for them when they're older. Same thing with the Narrows. It wasn't a good idea this trip. It, the river's really fast right now and my kids are not that tall yet. So the, I think the river would knock them over and be dangerous. And I, so I think that if you go to Zion and you know your own limitations and have a good head about you, you're going to be safe. It's going to be fine and your family's going to have an amazing trip.